leader in postal innovation and here I am today interviewing him about omnichannel. So Richard, at the moment the buzzword is omnichannel. Could you explain to us what omnichannel actually means? Hi Julie, yeah, it's uh, omnichannel is a sort of new, uh, there are a few sort of buzzwords around but omnichannel is not a buzzword, it is actually a, quite a fundamental change in the way things are going to work. Uh, the, the context that I speak about it is in the context of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So e-commerce, the UK is a market leading country in terms of e-commerce, probably one or two, first or second in the world. And it's growing quite rapidly and it's still growing even during recession. So it's, we, we're, we're a big country on that. But e-commerce that we talk about in the UK is uh, based on some fairly old style principles. It's based on the originally on the catalogue shopping market going back to the sort of 1980s. So like big Freeman's. Big, sorry, like Freeman's catalogue. Yeah. Matins, that sort of stuff. Those are the companies I worked with back in the day, so it was quite, it was quite interesting. But it was huge warehouses, uh, phone calls to make your order, but then moving on to the internet to make your order. But then still large, we call them business to consumer uh, carriers, like the post office or Freeman's Grattans, you know, those sort of companies, delivering the stuff to your home. Um, and that's taken off and it's been enhanced and, and improved over the years. But it's still that big mega chain with lots of economies of scale in it. But the problem is now, when it gets to the home, there's nobody there. They're out working. So that's this, right. big, this big behemoth, this huge um, process is... It's grown, it's big, but it's almost reached the limits of its growth. And now the next thing that's coming along is omnichannel. And what omnichannel is, it's it's not just taking the one option, it's actually using choice. So using, it's largely driven by smartphones, smartphone technology. The people who use smartphones are used to choice and they want the same choice on their e-commerce. So the whole thing now is, 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 is changing into this omnichannel. Omnichannel is not just ordering from a warehouse and getting it delivered to your home a couple of days later. It's now quite radical. It's, I'm sitting at home one night, I want to order something. Uh, I don't want to wait in tomorrow for it. I'm going to be in London at a meeting. So I want it delivered to an automated box at King's Cross so that I can collect it on my way to work in the morning and actually be able to use it during the day. Is that or, actually happening, Richard, or is this, this just a dream at the moment? Well, the box bit is, is happening. For some reason, it hasn't happened in the UK, but in Germany, there's a company that I work closely with called Keba, and they've deployed DHL pack stations throughout Germany. Uh, so within about two miles of every German, there's a Keba box in the street where they can pick up their goods. If you go into Cologne Station in Germany, so this is you going to work, but not in London, going to Cologne, mm -hmm. The whole station platform, one end of the station platform, is completely filled with these automated boxes. About, um, I wouldn't say how many boxes, but about 50 to 100 yards worth of boxes along the side of the station. So would you get a code on the way to work and then you could just digitally put that in and get your, yeah. or coming home from work? Get a, get that a sounds code, fantastic. Get, get a code when you make the order. There was one example in Germany that I thought was absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know the Harry Potter book? It's yes. a little bit old news now, but the last Harry Potter book uh, was released at midnight in Germany. And what they'd done is they pre-positioned the books in the pack stations. So every pack station had two or three boxes allocated to Harry Potter books. And they were put in in slow time over the days, you know, beforehand. But at midnight, when you were ordering, you made your order online, you were given a code, and you were told that your book is now ready for collection and it's down at the end of your street in the pack station wow. in box number one, two, three. So almost instantaneous satisfaction of your delivery, of your, your purchase and delivery request, and, and, almost in, and, and not for an extra cost. So you don't get sort of immediate delivery. It's going to cost you squadrillions of pounds to get it. It's really cheap. It's cheap it's for that them. In it's cheap. Instant happiness. Instant happiness. And if you're a, a retail guru like my wife, that's really quite important. Absolutely. <laughs> so why, why haven't we got that here at the moment, Richard? Um, people don't quite get it. It's happening. It's, um, it's definitely happening. There was a... Let me just give you another angle. That's just one angle of it. When Omni, omni means lots of different ways. And one mm -hmm. other way is you go into the high street, you go into the store, 
you ask the store about different products, and then you want your goods to, uh, collected. Now, they can't hold up all that stock in the high street. What they can do is they can deliver it to your home. So you can order on the high street, deliver it to home, or you can order at home and collect on the high street. Now, one of the things that's happened on the high street just in the last week is you had this tie-up between eBay and Argos. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can order on, Ar on eBay or through your eBay system, and you can collect in store at the weekend when you're in the high street doing your shopping, your normal shopping. That's fantastic. And that was just announced this week. But that's. The but do you time. think many people who are in the UK would wonder why this has happened, this joint venture has happened, because they're not quite understanding omni-channel retail anyway? Yes, yeah, that's that's for sure. I, I, I've been to, I go to most of the big conferences on e-commerce in the UK. There was... Uh, um, there was one which was the uh, uh, a multi-channel uh, provider. They deal with the, the, the software behind the blue, uh, the, uh, the 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 big name retailers mm -hmm. uh, called uh, MetaPack, and they hold a conference each year. And they were talking. The only thing they were talking about last year was omni-channel. Um, the 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 but it's it's a common theme of all the e-commerce events. But it hasn't yet got through to the individuals, to the to the consumers. They don't fully understand it. But imagine, imagine yourself. You go into a uh, into a high street retailer. Maybe not a. Let's say it's a. I don't know what your what your what your brands are that you look for. But just if I if I said Marks and Spencer, that's probably a bit old fashioned. But you know what you know what I mean. No, I still shop at Marks and Spencer's. Okay, so you can imagine somewhere like Huntingdon, which is a small market town, couldn't really justify a big Marks and Spencer's. But maybe Marks and Spencer's set up a a position there, a yes. small shop, with some of the more fast-moving goods, uh, people in store who can help you and advise you about stuff and show you stuff online to help you with your shopping and give you the information on the latest thing that you can buy, the latest design, latest fashion. So you're getting the in-store advice. Buying it in store and then get it delivered to you at home. So there's a company, it's only in the in, in uh, London at the moment, called Shuttle. Have you heard of Shuttle? It's I have heard of Shuttle, actually. Rocket. Yes, I heard a shuttle at an exhibition I went to. Uh, yeah. Somebody was talking about it, and I, there were a few raised eyebrows at the time. I remember. So you can be you can be in central London. You can be shopping on Oxford Street. You can buy your goods in store. They'll be delivered to you by shuttle within an hour or an hour and a half of you buying them. And I've seen some of the awards coming out for their delivery people. They have this person's beaten the record. They had a mm -hmm. delivery in 40 minutes last yesterday. So that's wow. incentivizing their delivery people. And the delivery people are not going, necessarily going out in vans. They're going out on bikes or whatever is most appropriate. Around London, them. of course. So this is really radically shaping up, shaking up the high street. It's shaking up retail. And it's giving choice to what I call the sort of connected generation. Yes. The people who use smartphones, who use iPads, who use Android, who, use, who, who are used to having choice. And want choice on their purchases and and and, uh, and shopping. And you say connected. Uh, how I see it with what you're saying now is that the division between e-commerce online and the store is going to become very connected. Would you say? Yes, for sure. No, that's that, that, that's the that's the whole trick. I mean, we see it at the moment in the in the British High Street. We see really suffered during the recession. You see a lot of shops uh, that are um, that have got for sale signs or for mm. let signs and you see a lot of the pawn shops springing up or the, uh, or the, um, the you know, the... the um, you have the many, the charity shops. The charity shops, yeah. that's, the word, that's the word I was looking for. You see a lot of that springing up. So in a way it's degrading the high street. This is a way of revitalizing the high street and most of the big retailers understand that. And it's about getting people out, making the high street interesting for people. Yes. It? And then, how do you see social working with omni-channel retail? I think social is uh, is the thing that's given the oomph to the whole process. People are used to getting choice and and instant response to things. They 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 want it that way. They want to be able to. Uh, compare prices or compare what they're buying with their friends you know so the what was maybe a, um, let, let me give you an example I, I, this Christmas it used to be in my industry in the express logistics delivery industry that 
there was a cliff edge just before Christmas. There was a time in the market, in, in the, the physical distribution of goods, that beyond this particular time, it couldn't be delivered for Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. So everything had to be before that point, and and then it just went over. It went over. It was it was massive, ten times the normal distribution. Next day, nothing. Well, last Christmas it changed. Last Christmas, people were buying, getting iPads for their Christmas. They were getting tablets for their Christmas. There was lots of advertising on television over Christmas, and what people were doing was that they were shopping on their tablets as a Christmas activity with their friends and family. Of course. Saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Comparing this with that and, and talking about things. So actually, this year, for the very first time, there was a during Christmas and after Christmas continuation of the Christmas peak. Wow. And that was purely down to social, and it was down to people starting to use the technology that they got for Christmas to do the shopping that they wanted to do. That's amazing. So, that, I mean, that's literally just happened. Yeah, no, this is this is very it's, it's it's happening very quickly. And if you, I think some of the big retailers have understood it and are thinking about it strategically. They need to be engaging in omnichannel, uh, but what's more, they need to be also engaging in social. So you need to be able to say go into a, and, and and social just part of it, but the whole. You need to be able to go into, say, there's Marks and Spencer's mythical Marks and Spencer that's talking about hunting the high street. And you go into a, a smart mirrored changing booth and you say, this is what I'm looking for. And it shows you the clothes on you in the mirror. And it shows you it in different colors and it gives you choice. And you then decide to purchase or not from what it looks like, not physically trying the stuff on, it's suggesting stuff to you. So mm -hmm. that smart bit is really completely transforms the whole retail experience, I, I believe. So how, how does any retail organization make this shift? Because um, for anyone to get it in the, the generation of now, uh, they would want it streamlined, they would want it to be very convenient, and they would want to have a great experience with the store in in store and online. So how how does a store nowadays make that shift? How do they make it happen? Okay, well, the, the, let's just deal with the logistics first of all. The, the logistics when I first started in the express industry it was about you built your overnight hub in the Midlands, uh, round about the M6. It, the the road network in the UK is a bit like a shaped like a rugby post. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the very centre of the central bar is Coventry, so most of the large distribution warehouses were in the Coventry area. Now if someone makes an order, you would, you would use that centre point within the road network to get all the goods picked into the centre and then delivered next day. So you'd have a, the whole network was close of business next day. Now with Omnichannel what's happening is that people are now building, it's, it's, not, it's just beginning to happen, they're beginning to build what I call dark warehousing. So imagine somebody building a huge dark warehouse just on the A14 to the north of Cambridge. And what is a dark warehouse, Richard? A dark warehouse is unbranded, so it's a, it's a massive facility, unbranded, where you can actually bring your goods as retail items. Or, or hold it you know, in bulk into the warehouse and then fulfill out of the warehouse. So that means that, say, I had my Nike trainers in a bulk warehouse just outside Cambridge, and someone said, goes into the store, said, I like this particular type of trainer. Well, the fulfillment out of that warehouse can be done within an hour, mm. done within half an hour. It's, not a, it's no longer an overnight close of business service, it's now sub same day. So you'd actually fulfill all the orders, all the e-commerce orders for Cambridge out of one warehouse. But it would be right. dark and branded. It wouldn't be branded as Amazon or Mark uh -huh. Spencer or whatever. It would just be an unbranded dark warehouse. Maybe even lights out, maybe automated pick and pack. So but would you say the shift would be quite easy? Yeah, I think it's just it's a different way of thinking. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a different mindset. Now, I'm not saying that this type of what I would call smart distribution, definitely driven by smartphone and people who have choice and who are, who are connected. Yes, there are a whole stack of people who are not connected. Um, my mother-in-law, probably not going to buy using a smartphone, probably just wants a traditional, fairly, I would call it dumb distribution. 
She doesn't want anything more. So you've got smart distribution and done distribution. Yes. Okay. And whereas before, you would have, you'd certainly have different networks for B2B and B2C, business to business or business to consumer. You design your networks differently. That's the old model. Now I think those two are going to be replaced by another two, which are smart and, and dumb. And I don't mean dumb disparagingly. Mm -hmm. I just mean it's not, it's not smart. And smart is, is, is you think smart would be more expensive than dumb, but it's not. Smart is cheaper than dumb. So you we're talking about these automated boxes. Um, so if you have a, say we have an automated box in Huntingdon near where I live, uh, if I ordered to there and got it delivered, it would be delivered, I'd be told when it arrived. But from the carrier's point of view, the carrier is delivering 50 items to the same location. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to deliver those items when the person is awake, so he can deliver them in the middle of the night where there's no congestion, there's no difficulty in getting to that location. And the driver will be finished his job just by delivering everything to the same location. So the, the cost saving is enormous for the carrier. And of course, the carrier should then be putting that back onto the e-tailer, providing a cheaper service. So everybody, and then the consumer gets the cheaper service from the e-tailer. So everybody wins. It's like a vicious circle. Oh, not, not it a is a win-win, win, I circle. think. Yeah, because you've also got the, the amount of drop-offs that they do when people aren't in. Then you've got the queues that happen for people going to the post office to collect yeah. up the items. So, uh, and that's annoying for the customer then, because they then have to get in the car and travel, use petrol, queue. It's a bit of a frustrating time for them. So, yeah, I I agree. This omni-channel is um, is great, but how how do we get people to shift their mindsets? Well, I think that's the start, challenge. I think, I, I think you're beginning to see this, the start of it. I think it's beginning to happen. Uh, the large the large retailers have been running concept stores now for some time. And, and this is the other bit that's using the identification of objects, which is my other area, which is identification solutions. So using smart tags and and, and things on devices on 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 the on the goods in question to make them intelligent. But you had uh, House of Fraser ran a, a high street omni channel shop trial. Marks and Spencers ran a similar one. Uh, so all the big e-tailers have all been trying this out. Uh, not not countrywide, but in a particular niche part of the country. So they're all they're all fairly familiar with it, and they are all talking about it. Issues come up about how do you how do you um, how do you train people? How do you train the sales assistant to deal with this? Um, there's also this other bit, which is called. Have you heard the, the expression showrooming? No, I haven't. Showrooming is quite an interesting concept. What you have is you have somebody going into a, sh into a shop and looking at the goods, but looking at the goods online. So I see uh, a nice new uh, tablet for sale at John Lewis, and it's got, a t it's got a, a 2D barcode on it, or it's got an augmented reality image. If I take a picture of that with my smartphone, I then get taken to the website. And it says Richard Wishart is in this store looking at this item. Now let's show him the information about this product. Let's give him a video. Let's 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 personalize it for Richard Wishart. Let's he's interested in this aspect of this product. Let's customize it for him. So and if he wants to buy it, let him buy it on his tablet. Mm. Don't have him going to the point of sale terminal. Don't go That's fantastic. Him, get him yeah, so it's buy. really customer centric, isn't it? So I I get the vision then if I was to look at a dress um, I would then have uh, a pair of shoes offered to me if I was looking at that dress through my mobile. Yes. So it would be an upsell through mobile. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's this. Um, it's it's worth having a look, and I would recommend people to look at this whole idea of, 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 of they call it showrooming. But actually, you get some companies that are very traditional. That the, the people are standing behind their counters with their point of sale terminals. You've got to go to them. But why not? If you're there, you've got smart money on your on your tablet. You can pay for things on the internet. Why not just allow people to go and look? Give them some clues. Give them some things that they can scan, or even just the the object itself. If you use augmented reality, which I I've been playing with as well, you go into the shop. You see a dress. I'll say I'll say a dress because it's a female retail. You take a picture of the of the dress. It, the, the system then uses that picture as an augmented reality trigger image to take you to the right place on the internet to look at it. That's so fascinating. no barcodes, no QR codes, 
just the image of the of the object uh, will drive you to the right place to look at that uh, to look at that item. That's great. And then you're also building the data up about that customer, exactly mm. what that customer likes, when they shop, what they regularly go in for, when mm. they've run out of stuff. <laughs> so yeah. you probably would have, you know, a four-week cycle and something, and it'd be, oh, that person's probably run out of that now. It's almost, like, it's almost like I think you've got to be a bit careful because of the, psycholo the psychology of it all. But if people can set themselves up with all this technology and everything, almost like a friendly uh, personal shopper or a personal shopping assistant. So not sort of putting stuff in people's face, but really helping them with uh, the, uh, you know, I'm looking at this dress in, house, in, 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 in John Lewis. I'm looking at this dress. I want to see what my friends think about it. So let's share it with my friends while I'm in the booth talking about it, and let's see what see what they think. See who's buying stuff. You know, sharing that sort of shopping. And it's a lot of people go in for retail because it's almost like a community. It's a it's a it's a, it's a there's a good feel about it. But it's only good when you where you're collaborating and mm. talking. Well, it is. I mean, the last pair of shoes I bought, um, I loved them, went in the store, fell in love with them, took a photograph of them on my phone, shared it across Twitter. I had about three friends uh, tweet me back, buy them, buy them. So I bought them. So yeah, I share my purchases before, you know, before I actually go to purchase anything. It's, it's like, you know, you want, you want that backup from your friends. Yeah, go and get it. Okay, I'm going to spend my money. So, so yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm convinced this is the way that it will go. I can see people wanting this, demanding it. And I think the real difficulty is for these large distribution networks to morph into a, into a network that's capable of delivering it and enabling their uh, what the customers are wanting. The customers mm -hmm. are demanding it. And if it can be cheaper, more efficient, and better in terms of the product, then the UK e-commerce market will, can only benefit Definitely, yeah. It's, it's like putting the cu customers in charge of the experience now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's fascinating, Richard. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. I really enjoyed it. Mm, We've got pleasure. some uh, um, stuff on about Omnichannel. That's brilliant. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay, thanks, Julie. Bye-bye.